Hey everyone, it's Allison Haikila. Thank you so much for joining me. It's time for my latest video for Imagine, and we are going to be playing with some dye ink refills. I've got Celeste Blue, Lavender, and Pansy, and we're going to try using them in some creative ways. You can see here that I've got my 6x6 six six gel press plate out, and I'm going to apply some of the Celeste Blue, and then a little bit of the Lavender to the plate. And then I'm going to roll out that color with my brayer and try and get those colors to blend and move together. But first, I want to spray them with a little bit of water. And now we're going to roll them out with the brayer. Got a nice bit of color on there. I've got some scrap on the side here that I'm just rolling the excess onto. And I've got a piece of cardstock. I don't usually use cardstock when I'm using my gel press plate. I usually use a nice uh, grade copy paper. But we're going to be using some paste on today's project. So I wanted to make sure that it would be able to handle the weight. And copy paper sometimes can't handle the weight of a paste. So I decided to go with this instead. So that's the start. We're going to do another layer of this. I want some more color. I think we're going to stick with just the Celeste Blue though. Let's add a little bit more of this across the plate and spray it with some more water and then pull another print. And push that color around. Now these refills are meant for refilling your ink pads, but you can use them in plenty of different ways. And this is just one of them. All right, so now we're gonna pull another print. Seems like there's a lot of color off to the side. I really want some more in the middle. And I don't mind if it's grungy, but I do wanna have a decent amount of coverage of color. That's looking a little bit better. I think we're gonna do one more and then we'll see where we wind up. So let me do that off camera real fast. Okay, that's my third pull, and I think it's looking much better. I like that there are some darker layers. I like that there are some lighter layers. I think that that's going to work out just fine in the end. So we have our finished piece here, and I've got this really cool rotating ring stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. This is a 6x9 stencil, but in trying to figure out how we're going to place this, I think I want less of the circle and more of this here. I actually might shift it down a bit like so, but we're not even up to this point yet because what we've got to do first is we've got to use our pansy. And what we're doing with that, <clears throat> excuse me, is we're going to take some molding paste from Golden. Use whatever white embossing paste that you may have in your stash. This just happens to be one of the ones that I have. And we're gonna take some of this and put it onto our surface here, like so. And then I'm gonna take some of the pansy ink and apply it to that paste. And then I'm gonna take my palette knife and mix that together. Now keep in mind, this is a white paste, so it's gonna lighten up that color a bit. Might not lighten it too much, it's not gonna make it pastel because I did put like three drops in here, but it will lighten it a bit. And I actually don't mind that there's variation in color. I think that that makes it much more interesting. Scrape off some of that excess here so that we don't waste it. And we can put that right on the back of the palette knife. So now we're going to set this up, tape it down, and we're gonna apply this paste through our stencil. I actually think that this is a little bit damp right now because I put so much ink on here, so I'm gonna quickly dry this with my heat tool and then we will add the paste. Okay, we are going to apply this paste right through the stencil doing this a little bit differently than I typically would because I don't necessarily want it to be a perfect stencil job and clearly I'm gonna to need to make some more paste but that's all right I didn't want to make too much because I didn't want to waste it because obviously we can't put this back in our container 
if you have some type of airtight container that you can store the excess in, then that's fine. But if you don't, you don't want to waste it. So I'm going to make a little bit more. Mix it up again. What a great purple. Really like this color. I actually have lots of pansies growing in my garden of all different colors, but I always make sure that I have at least some purple because they're just so pretty. All right, that looks good. We're also not going to use this whole panel. We'll wind up cutting it down. But having some excess of the panel so that we can kind of decide what section we want to use is good. I actually might cover the whole thing because I'm liking how it's looking. And if you scrape up, you have excess on your palette knife like that and you can just reuse it. But if it's a little grungy and imperfect, that's okay. Because our print below was pretty grungy too. Usually when I'm applying paste to through a stencil, I very specifically put it up at the top and then drag it down. But we're going for a bit of a messier look today. All right, I think that that's pretty good. A couple of holes here and there, but that's all right. Part of me wants to make it completely perfect and solid and other parts of me doesn't want to do that. So I'm battling within myself right now. Okay, I think that we're good. I'm gonna peel this off and reveal what we have. We have a little bit of a mess up here, that's okay. Kind of seeped through underneath because the, the cardstock is a little bit warped. It seeped through here and here, but that's all right. This part is probably not even gonna get used today. And we can always put a sentiment here, but this is looking pretty cool so far. So now what we need to do is let it dry. And that's sometimes the hardest part is waiting for it to dry before we can move on. For now, I'm going to go and wash these off because we don't want the paste to dry on our palette knife or on our stencil. So make sure you wash these things thoroughly and right away. Our panel is all nice and dry. You can see it's got some cool texture happening. It's got a low profile. Um, and it, even though it looks like a hot mess, I promise it's gonna look great when we're done. So I've got this piece of cardboard and I cut the interior measurements to be four by five and a quarter. And I use this all the time. You'll probably have seen it in some of my other videos, but I use it to isolate different areas of a background so that I can figure out where I want to cut my panel. And I really think that I want to go with something like this. I think that's where it's going to be. So I'm going to use this with my paper trimmer and just cut out these areas. So sometimes what I like to do is I'll just take a pencil and just kind of mark off that that's going to be that first cut and then I can figure out the rest from there. So I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and cut this down off camera to four by five and a quarter. Okay, here is the finished panel, and it's just a little bit smaller than four by five and a quarter. Um, this line here had a gap, and I didn't want the paste to have a, an ending. I wanted it to look as though it continued past the panel, so I just cut it a little bit smaller. So now I have the ultramarine ink refill, and I'm going to apply some of this to my mat. Just a drop. Maybe that's two drops. I'm going to spray it with water. You could see that color kind of explode there. And now I'm going to take a brush. I think we need some more water. This way it can really get to moving. I'm going to dip my brush in here and splatter this panel really well with this color. Just to add to the mess and to the grunge and just make it look a little bit more interesting. Just getting it all over. Like that.
That looks cool. While this is drying, I think that we're going to apply the same color to our card base. Okay, so we've already made this color. We've already got a mess on our on our mat. Why not just add some of this color and not waste it? Just using the same brush to apply that color. Usually I do this at the end, but the color is already here, so we may as well just use it. This is just a nice way to add some drama, add additional pops of color. Okay. That should be enough, but again, I made this a little smaller than I typically do. Yeah, we're going to add a little bit more color. Again, it's here anyway, so let's just thicken that band up and make sure that there's no white showing. You could, of course, use a colored cardstock for your card base, but then you gotta worry, like, is my pen gonna show? What if I wanna stamp on the inside? Do I have a color that will work with that? This way, you could still use your white card base. You're just making it work for you and your card a little bit more. See that? I think that that's very cool. I think we need some shine though. What do you guys think? I think so. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of shine to this. I'm gonna clean this up and grab something with shine. I've got Fireworks Spray and London Fog. You can also use any of the Sheer Shimmer Spritzes. I was gonna use Silver, but I don't happen to have that right now. So we're gonna go with London Fog. This will work too. And again, I just shook this up because there's that mica powder in the bottom and you wanna make sure that that gets mixed into the colorant and just splattering this all over. And that's gonna give us a nice bit of shimmer. Very often I'll use my fireworks sprays to paint around the edges of my card bases the way I just did with that leftover ultramarine ink. But in this case, I really wanted to use that blue up, so we went with that. You can see how pretty that shine is. Look at that. All right, we're going to set this off to dry, and then we'll move on to our sentiment. That is all dry. Oh, well, except for a little bit right there, but that's okay. Look at that shine, just from the London fog. It's fantastic. So for our sentiment, I figured we'd use one of these guys. This is from Honey Bee Stamps. It's the Big Time Kindness stamp set. And I've got a binder where I like to keep my sentiments. I got this idea from a friend and keep them in here. So I was thinking about using this Hey Girl. Got them all ready to go. We just need to add our sub sentiment, but I thought that that would be really fun. So we're gonna go with that. And I'm gonna pull the same color of Versafine Claire to stamp out the sub sentiment. So to figure out what that is, if you know one wasn't able to figure it out right off the bat, I've got my little swatches here and I'm gonna just match up that color. And you can see, at least I hope that you can see that it's this one back here and that is Monarch. So I'm gonna grab my Monarch and we're gonna stamp out You're the Best on a strip of paper. Okay, got my Monarch here. Got my sentiment, take a deep breath and stamp. Perfect. Now we're going to trim that down. This will be off screen and my apologies, I can't fit the whole trimmer on screen without hitting my camera rig. You'll have to forgive me. But there we go. That's all done. And you can see that I have it at a diagonal here. It works with the shape of the way, excuse me, the curve of the way the stencil is going. Plus it hides this mess that I have here. So that's going to go just like that. And I love it. I think it's really cool. Okay, let's get our adhesive.
Ignore the oopsie on the back here. You'll never see it. Place this down right on top of that mistake. And then we'll add some adhesive to this. And then we can glue the whole thing to our card base that is now nice and dry. So we've used our dye reinkers in a bunch of ways today to come up with a messy, cool, fun, stenciled, graphic, bold card. You can, of course, use these techniques on the things that are a little bit more subdued. Change up the colors, change up the style, and even though the techniques may be the same, you'll get a completely different look. And apparently I have ink on my fingers because I'm making a mess. So I've got my mono eraser. I'm going to zoom in for you. Got my mono eraser here from Tombow that I'm just going to try and remove some of that color. But if it doesn't happen, that's okay. We can always splatter the sentiment too and go with that, but I don't think it's necessary. That's a little better. Okay. There's our card, you guys. I think we need a couple of sequins. What do you think? Gotta have some sequins. Let me grab some. I grabbed the Crystal Metallic Splash Card Bling from A Colorful Life Designs. And I placed them on here. I think that, that it looks all right. Might not be perfect, but I think it's all right. I've got my on-point glue. This is my favorite glue to use for adhering sequins. I'm going to grab my pokey tool in my right hand and the glue in my right hand because I am right-handed and then my jewel picker on in my left hand and I'm going to pick it up, the sequins, squeeze some glue, place it down and use the pokey tool to keep it in place. And I'm going to repeat that with all of the sequins. And it makes for very quick work and you're not struggling with trying to get the sequins off of the wax tip of the jewel picker. One more after this. There we go. I like to tap this down, kind of cleans out the nozzle and then make sure you recap it right away. And that is our card for today. And I think it came out really cool. We used a bunch of fun techniques with re-anchors and I think the results would brighten anybody's day. All right, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I'll be back very soon with another video. Be well, stay safe, peace out.